Welcome to a new video series where I interview experts from S&P Global Platts to help us understand and to demystify energy transition, one question at a time. I'm Guy Raz, and I'm interested in the future of energy. In this, our first episode, Roman Kramarchuk and Alan Hayes will lay out the background. Roman, let's start with energy transition, the intense focus on this process at the moment. Help us understand what we mean when we say energy transition. Sure, um, energy transition has become a very vogue term, but the fact is the concept of energy transition has been around with us for centuries. You know, we've, we've gone through a progression of, of moving from biomass and wood to our fossil fuels and what's next. And the way we, we look at this is, is really that this transition happens because people decide that something is either cheaper or more convenient and in this latest iteration of the energy transition, it's really people deciding that these energy forms need to be sustainable, that there has to be a minimal impact on our planet to ensure that we can continue to live in it. But with energy such a critical part of GDP and such a critical part of our entire economy, these transitions are important. And I see it as designing a pathway to achieve decarbonization. And then around that, you have the associated issues of delivering that path to decarbonization in a way that has minimal disruption on our daily lives, on, on the global community's lives, because this is something that needs to happen globally and needs to start happening on a, on a time scale that starts now so we can get on that path to decarbonization. I think of it as a carbon budget. Uh, our humanity has been releasing CO2 over the years, and to be sure, there's only so much more we can release um, in terms of anthropogenic CO2 to allow us to meet a two degree target or a 1.5 degree target, or to actually even halt the temperature increases. So what that means is that we have to look at how these trajectories are set. And I, I think of it as a Venn diagram of, of policy, of technology, and of behaviors and markets because it's the intersection of those three that are gonna determine which direction we go to and, and which one of the different pathways we take to get to the ultimate level that we're trying to achieve, be it net zero or, or net negative, which, is, which some companies have actually taken on as a target. In terms of the pace of energy transition, what are the, the key signals we should be looking for? I think that's a very relevant question. It's something that we spend a lot of time looking at because in, within our group, we develop outlooks, we look at the different pathways that can get us from point A to point B, but then we also have a signposts group, which really tracks what we're seeing on the technologies and on the policies. And in terms of technologies, things that we are always looking out for are cost points. When does that battery electric vehicle become equivalent to an internal combustion vehicle so that this doesn't have to be a policy question. This can be a question of consumers saying, wow, that electric vehicle is actually cheaper. So therefore that adoption, and when we think about adoption, we think about these S curves of adoption. We think about technologies starting expensive, but then starting to gain adoption, starting to be produced at scale, costs come down, there is learning by doing, costs come down some more, and that becomes ultimately what we call an S-curve of adoption, where, where that then becomes the, the predominant technology. I think one of the other key elements I think I, I look for as a signpost is, is the development of functioning, tradable, fungible markets, to use um, a, a kind of industry word. If we think about markets, we can go to pretty much anywhere in the world and buy a can of fizzy pop, or we can buy fuel to fill our car. And to a large degree, that's because of functioning tradable markets. So when we start to see the development of, of these markets, that's when we can start to deliver some of the new fuels that we're talking about and, and on the scale that is required to start to make a difference and, and move the dial on the decarbonization path that I think everybody is getting on board on that we, that we need to start. Roman, Alan, great discussion. Thank you very much. For those of you watching, you can continue the conversation online or on social media. I'm Guy Raz. Thanks for watching.